Hello everyone, this is Chris France with Advanced 2000 and uh, get started on today's webinar, VDC and the Cloud. I'd like to uh, take about one hour of your time today and hopefully this will prove to be uh, very educational and informative. All right, let's get started here. First, some basic facts about Advanced 2000 and Dassault Systems. Well, who is Advance 2000? Well, we are a full-service IT engineering company. We're an IT shop. We've got uh, physical offices in nine cities nationwide, and we're constantly growing. We also work through a network of partners that help to resell our services. We have highly trained and certified engineers, probably about, I don't know, 100 or so. The entire company, we've got about 150 people. We've been in business over 20 years and we provide managed IT services. For many of our clients, we are their IT shop. But we also sell products to the large enterprise customers as well, such as PBXs, storage, and so forth. Given the trends in cloud computing, which I'll be talking in more detail here shortly, we'll be, uh, we are a private cloud provider. And I'll get into that. So what's this Dassault Systems partnership going on? First, let me say that Advanced 2000 is a, an authorized uh, reseller for Dassault Systems. This just happened last year. In fact, Dassault Systems has decided to enter into the AEC industry like they've um, entered into many other industries. Uh, who, are, who is Dassault? Well, first and foremost, they are a scientific company. They're very large. They've got about 10,000 people, and they are growing. 150,000 enterprise customers, 3,500 partners. They are a long-term uh, driven software company. And we are partnered up as a reseller of their solutions. What markets do we serve? Well, Advanced 2000, we serve uh, not quite as many as Dassault, but we have the, the legal, the healthcare, uh, government. We do a lot of state and local governments, uh, getting into some federal work, manufacturing, K through 12, and higher education, and of course what we're talking about here today, the AEC industry, architecture, engineering, and construction. Probably more specifically, we're talking construction today. And Dassault's in many industries. There's 11 uh, listed. They, they're, uh, they're known for their aerospace and their transportation, the manufacturing sector, life sciences, consumer packaging, and so forth, financial services in here. Look at here. They've got an architectural, engineering, construction industry as well. They figured over the years, a lot of uh, firms have, you know, basically started using their software. You know, Frank Gehry used it for the Disney Concert Hall and such. And they said, you know, we haven't even been focusing on this industry and people are using our software. What could we do if we focused on it? So that's really what we're here to talk about today at the highest level. There's going to be more webinars in the future where we'll do deep dives and all these, all these solutions, but I wanted to kind of give you a high, high level view of how we're marrying private cloud computing of Advanced 2000 with the construction uh, platform of Dassault. And then who am I? Well, I'm, I'm Chris France. I, I, I'm not an architect. I'm not a construction uh, person. I'm, I'm an IT guy. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been the CIO at, a, at an AEC firm uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina for 11 years, and I'm now the president of Advanced 2000 North Carolina, uh, responsible for the southward expansion. I've worked for very large companies, IBM, Bank of America, and I've also authored a couple articles on BIM in the cloud and cloud computing and uh, AEC Bytes as well as Mastering Revit Architecture. And I do webinars, I speak, as well as be a uh, cloud CIO. Uh, also with me on this call, you'll, you'll hear talking uh, throughout the session, is Mark McDonough. He is our application expert in the cloud. I call him our BIM manager in the cloud, or our, now our VDC manager in the cloud. And uh, Chad Bennett, who is our cloud engineer, he'll be available for questions as well. All right, let's explore. First, I want to you know, kind of show you the big picture of what we're going to talk about today. We've got the basic facts of who we are. We're going to explore private cloud computing, kind of start with the foundational IT infrastructure, and then we're going to kind of get into the meat of the presentation, which is virtual design and construction, VDC, and then we'll wrap up about how you get started, where would you even start in this whole process. All right. Let's do this. First, I wanted to draw your attention to this book by Nicholas Carr called The Big Switch. Some of you may have read it. 
I read it, I think it came out in 2009, and I read it in 2011, late 2010. I, I tell people that I was too busy to read a book about the cloud as I was building the cloud. But it, there's a lot of parallels to what happened in the late 18th century, early 19th century with, with uh, electricity and how it was uh, manufactured and delivered. Early on, the, uh, the, no utilities existed. Um, each company, each corporation had to produce their own electricity. They got their own staff, their own generators, all their own switches, wiring, and so forth. Each person, each company generated their own electricity until somebody realized, it's like, hey, if we put this into a centralized uh, grid, if you will, or a utility, and we had somebody focus just on making electricity, and then we're able to distribute it to the people that need it, here we are we have today. All you do is you flip on the light, you plug something into the wall, you have electricity available to you. You've outsourced the production of your electricity. That ex exact same uh, parallel is happening to the data centers. You know, to date, Every, every corporation has bought their own switches, has bought their own storage, has bought their own you know, IT equipment, they've hired the staff, and now they're realizing that, hey, I can run all this IT from a data center, desktop, servers, storage, and just make it available as a utility. And so you pay as, pay as you go, pay what you need, and you don't have to, you can focus on your business. Same thing. So that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about a private cloud. The uh, we, we we how do we do it? Well, we've got our own data center, and actually we bought a uh, just bought another data center. We're expanding, and I want to make a difference of what I mean by a private data center or a private cloud versus a public cloud. You've all we've all heard of the Microsoft 365s and the Googles and the Amazons, and I would consider the you know Salesforce.com. I would consider those public clouds. They have uh, point solutions. They sell their products from their data centers, and they deliver it to you over the internet. We're doing a little, a little bit differently. We have a private data center where we run all of our applications our clients need in one data center. Of course, we have backup data centers and so forth where we have all the trained technicians, all the bandwidth. Most of the public uh, providers, they do not let you put in private circuits. You have to you know, consume their, their products over the Internet. You have two options with us. We provide all the power security. We buy in bulk. We lo you know, it allows us to drive the costs of the data center compute power down. And it also uh, allows us to centralize storage. And you'll see how important that is, particularly in the AEC, as we talk about the, uh, the VDC. All right. What does the Advanced 2000 private cloud look like? I, I, I use the analogy of a multi-tenant IT high-rise. That's kind of these buildings here. You can imagine each one of these floors are a different client. And so we've, we've virtualized your business. It's a, it's a Microsoft LAN. We've got virtualized servers, virtualized desktops. Now these, this infrastructure is suitable for running VDC and AEC applications, you know, the high-end applications, whether it be Navisworks or CATIA or Civil 3D or, or Revit or, or whatever. We've got particular expertise in creating those LANs for those specialized applications. This allows for the real-time collaboration. I always say, um, working in this industry for so long, we used to always, and we still do, many firms still have to distribute data to where the, the information is needed, whether it's an a office, you know, 20 offices nationwide or a job site or, or whatever. It makes uh, real-time collaboration very difficult. But by having all of your assets into one location, you basically centralized or co-located your whole construction team. And so you can do real-time collaboration no matter where you are physically located, job site, office, home, hotel, whatever. And we're going to show some of this in action. You know, Mark will show it to you uh, later. And we all, you know, offer as a standard 30-day you know, backup. You know, everybody wants to have their data backed up. Of course, we can go longer than that. Um, but 30 days is the, is the minimum. And then what we, uh, we also say, you know, BYOL. Bring your own license, and we'll talk a lot about licensing later. And I'm talking particularly about your AEC licensing, whether it be you know Tecla or, or Autodesk or, or Dassault. For right now, most of these uh, software vendors they don't let third-party IT companies like Advanced 2000 buy the licenses and rent them out. Um, you have to bring your own license to the cloud, but that's okay. That's you, you have to have your license anyhow. Uh, other vendors, other software vendors like Microsoft, uh, do allow us to buy the licenses and rent them to you. So it, it all depends on the software uh, vendor. 
and of course bandwidth. You know, we, we also have a, a carrier department that helps you. What good is a multi-tenant IT high-rise and a cloud and a private data center if you can't get to it? So we also have a carrier team that works with our clients to bring you to the cloud, whether it's a, a internet, if I can only get internet, some high, high bandwidth internet to your location, or private circuits, metro ethernet, you know, T1s, Whatever's the best, uh, best cap you know, best cost, best capabilities, best performance, we can work with our, our customers to get them to the data center. All right, that's the private cloud. I want to get. In, I'm kind of going a little bit more details. This is kind of I want to lay out the foundation for for these whole VDC applications. This is a very simple uh, diagram, Visio diagram of a 25 person construction team. And so here's the, the data center. Here's kind of where all the magic happens. This is the multi-tenant high-rise that I was talking about where we have, you know, firewalls that, that everyone can use, kind of a, a shared multi-tenant firewall. We've got virtual servers, virtual desktops, and we've probably got about, uh, let's say, about 20 different cloud desktops uh, that are standard configurations all the way from maybe a, a low-end admin or a receptionist all the way up to the very highest 48 gig, 64 gig of memory, you know, 12 core virtual workstations for rendering, video uh, compositing, uh, as well as other construction projects. Cloud engineers, I think this is Chad here on the left. Um, he's on the call and, and Mark's on the right in this, uh, this diagram. And so then you've got all the, like I said, all the IT assets are in the data center. You just got to get to them. So here we have location A. Maybe this is your office in... Uh, in, in North Carolina or, or California, wherever, and you remote connect. This is over uh, Metro Ethernet Fiber is the best performing, best cost circuit right now on the market. So we always try to get uh, Metro Ethernet Fiber into the building if it's available. And in this building, it happens to be, and they just connect directly to our data center, and they work just like they were sitting in the data or like all this IT was sitting in their office. Now the folks here. Maybe they're in a different office, or maybe this is a five-person uh, five job site or trailer. They've got a five-meg uh, cable modem, uh, internet connection into there, which would be sufficient for five users. They can log in through the cloud and run all of their construction applications, access their data, their project schedules, Primavera, whatever you need to, to run the job. And like I said, we are bringing the people to the data rather than moving all this data to the people. Think about it. a lot of these construction projects. The data size is not shrinking; it's you know multi terabytes. And when you have two, three, four, five different locations and try to replicate you know five terabytes, it's it's very time consuming. Not to mention costly to, to to house all this storage. And then you've got this third user. You know, it could be any one of these twenty five users when they go mobile, whether it's on a some kind of a laptop or a tablet, uh, and you can connect with Wi Fi, four G, whatever you can get, as long as you get at least a meg. Uh, up and down uh, from your device, you can connect into the cloud just like everybody else. So the actual computing experience, and we've got clients, and I'll talk about that later, we've got clients that are actually doing this now, large hospitals, 20 people on the project, all working from all over the country like they were sitting in the same office. It works very well, and it really changes the way you uh, deploy and deliver projects. All right. In summary, what are some of the, the cloud-based cloud -based benefits that I've been talking about? We've got real-time collaboration anytime, any device, uh, anywhere, any location. Reduce your hardware costs. Like I mentioned, you've got uh, you know five locations and, you, and you've got five terabytes of data. You've got five store, you know, servers with five terabytes in five locations. That costs a lot more than having five terabytes in one location. That's really what I tell business owners and and. Uh, Firm leaders, you know, look, 20 offices of IT cost more than one. They're, they're tracking me with on, on, on that. And so by being able to consolidate into the cloud, you, you greatly reduce your hardware costs as well as your IT admin and labor. You know, think about it. If you've got, you know, all these people keeping up with five uh, servers all over the country, that costs more than having, you know, one person uh, or a team in one location. And this leads to increased productivity and efficiencies. I've got, I've, uh, I was meeting with a, a large um, contracting firm a few weeks ago, and they, one of their uh, personnel told me that literally she spends probably 30 hours a week burning DVDs 
to send to all of the, the subs and in, in the, in the, in the uh, entire team. I said, all that is gone. You don't have to spend time burning DVDs to send, any, to, send to anybody or, or waiting for things to transfer over a slow network. It's just there and you get to it. All right, so that's the cloud. Let's talk about virtual design and construction, what we're here for today. I wanted to kind of, now this is, this is, uh, let's start right here. I want to talk about, you know, the, the current industry process. We all live in this environment. We've done it for years. We've got conceptual design, design development and engineering that produces construction drawings, which go out to bid. Contractor, winning contractor wins it, and they, they're, they're on the hook to build the building. Uh, they're starting to do more uh, fabrication or prefabrication, you know, off-site fabrication, whatever you want to call it, which always leads to some, some kind of litigation or change, change orders and you know, uh, miss things and so forth, and then you, you go on to operate your building. Well, uh, two points, if you, if you, if you uh, take nothing away from the seminar today, there's two points that I wanted to, to make sure that you're aware of. One, where, where Advanced 2000 is playing right now and, and should be the first thing that you consider, is to take your existing process and streamline your IT. So we've got a in this in this tr traditionally this first half of the process we've we've been calling it BIM, building information modeling, and the last half was when the contractor picks up. We've been calling it BDC, virtual design and construction. And sometimes these things will talk to each other. But Advanced 2000 right now, we've got a lot of BIM design engineering projects going on in the cloud in our, in our private data center. Pretty much the same way it's always been done, but instead of having to distribute this project data for between five or ten locations, now it's in one location. So they're, they're seeing extreme uh, productivity on that. I call this lean IT. You know, lean means you want to eliminate waste from the manufacturing uh, realm. Well, there's a lot of waste in IT every time you distribute it. So if we cannot distribute it, if we can consolidate it into one location, we're a lot lean. And we've got some uh, contractors starting to, to move to the cloud. We'll talk a little about this. You know, got Navisworks stood up in the cloud and so forth, and they're trying to get this uh, sharing and collaboration going on. So that's, that's the first thing that, that, that I, ju I just spoke about with the private cloud. The second thing, which is really now starting to get into uh, Dassault's realm, they look at this process saying, look, this is a very inefficient process. We're going to take our manufacturing expertise, our backgrounds. This, by the way, this same process exists in other industries. We see it, you know, in aerospace and automotive, and they say there's a better way. And not only is there a better way, there's better tools to do this. So they're taking that same, you know, tried and true, you know, 20 plus, 30 years of experience in manufacturing and bringing this into the AEC, so we want to optimize the VDC workflow, and basically we want to be able to construct lean. All right, well, how do we do that? The concept, we, we, we replace this design development engineering, construction drawings bid process, with what they call uh, production engineering. This is right from, from uh, the manufacturing. Uh, right now, you still got the, 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 the construction company still doing their fabrication, still got the litigation, but then once we get to the point where production engineering replaces the existing processes, we can start moving up the prefabrication into earlier into the process so that really, you know, most of the, the, the field work is installation, you greatly reduce and or eliminate your, your litigation or your potential for you know, lawsuits and so forth. And now we're talking about means and methods. I want to be very clear on this. You know, before we were talking about, you know, up here, Design, design intent, construction drawings. Now we're talking about means and methods from a Dassault perspective. And, and, how, and, and so how are we going to improve the building delivery process? Well, this is really where, from the manufacturing means and methods, you've got this team, you know, whether you call it you know, IPD or everybody working together, you're engineering the building, not just drawings, but you're actually working through how the thing will be constructed in the field in the very details. And I'm going to show you some of that live. And it's an iterative process with all the trades, the subcontractors all involved working on the uh, single version of the truth. You're going to hear a lot of that. Uh, we tried to get to, uh, we're starting to see the beginnings of the single version of the truth by having these, uh, you know, five, ten offices of, uh, of BIM design work that I was mentioning all located into one 
one data center so that when somebody changes something or moves a column or whatever, everybody knows about it. Now we're starting to expand through this whole process to get all the stakeholders involved in the construction process. Um, I can't tell you how many um, conversations I've had with architects and we talk about what's your product and I go, well, our product is drawings. I say, well, you might think that, but ultimately the owner wants a building or a structure, or a bridge, whatever. The, the end, end result is, a, is the built environment. And that's really what we're, we're uh, working to improve. Now, with, with the SO, uh, we've got two of their uh, products. They, they call them brands. Uh, within a brand, you'll have several products. And uh, Dassault is a huge animal. There's probably two or 300 products in the Dassault platform. But that's the important thing to, 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 uh, to take away is that we're talking about a platform here. I want to take you back, oh, I don't know, 20 years, 25 years. When, uh, in, you know, when we talk about platforms, and I remember this, there was a long Gartner, uh, Gartner Group research on this. I can remember using Lotus Notes 1, 2, 3, uh, WordPerfect for my word processor, and a, uh, another presentation, uh, maybe it was PowerPoint. And I, got, I, I wanted to have the best of breed tools. Uh, to do this office suite, and I lashed them together, and we had to, and we had problems getting things out of one, two, three, and into you know WordPerfect and so forth until Microsoft finally came out and said, "Look, we don't need all, you don't need all these integration headaches. What you need is a suite, a platform, and that and here we have the Office platform. And how long have we all been using the Office platform? We're talking about the same thing. We've got all these point solutions that are good solutions, and we've got them all running in our data center now. But boy, wouldn't a platform be nice?" where all this stuff plays together nicely and, it's, and, it, and, it, and it, there's a whole process through it all. And it all starts with their uh, Dassault's Innovia product, which is their lean construction solution. They call it an experience. This is not just a set of software. It's a whole experience on how you deliver buildings. And Innovia is, is, the, is the starting point. It's, the, it's kind of the traffic cop or the conductor, if you will, of being able to manage all this information. And I want to make real clear, in, in construction, the, the pretty BIM models and the 3D models are important, but they're like 10% of the overall process. You've got supply chain, you've got uh, ordering, you've got you know, logistics, you've got suppliers, you've got project schedules. You've got a lot more information that you need to manage to effectively design a building. And so uh, Anovia is that, is that platform. Look at here, you've got IFC Exchange as well. We don't expect everybody to go out and throw out all their current tools. You can use what you got. And, as you, and, and migrate into this platform. IFC Exchange, uh, Mark will talk a little bit about that. There's other ways um, to get data into, whether it be Revit or Rhino or anything else. Uh, of course, CATIA is uh, fabrication level modeling. We'll show you some of that to kind of get you through this whole process. So you see this, this platform is starting to uh, materialize. And like I said, we've got two of their, uh, their brands running in our data center right now, Anovia, the Lean Construction Experience, as well as CATIA. And here are some of the other brands from a, from a Dassault product of, of where, where construction companies are going and what they're going to be using, just a, a high level. Like I said, I'm not going to go into a, a deep dive on all these products today. That's going to be uh, future webinars, but I wanted to show you what's coming. You're, you guys are on the ground floor of some, some new things that are happening. Of course, you've got the uh, CATIA, which is the 3D authoring and fabrication uh, tool. Uh, Simulia is the engineering analysis and simulation. Exalead is a, basically a smarter search capability for project clarity. It's kind of like a, a Google for, uh, for this environment. Uh, 3D via field communication, installation videos, and so forth on how you do certain things, and, and Delmia, which is the process and logistics simulation, and I'm going to show you a demo on that. So all of these things are, are all working together on one platform to achieve the end goal of, of a, a, a well-built building. A um, little more detail on the Lean Construction Suite within this. what's happening now with process modules. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you some real high-level information, and then we're going to start drilling down into specific customers using this, and some, we'll actually show you running in, in our cloud. And like I said, you know, the, the, the building model uh, is, is one aspect, organizing the scope and data of CAD, BIM, IFCs from all different types of tools. That's one aspect. But you've got procurement, document status reminders, RFIs, transmittals, life cycle approvals, electronic approvals, uh, work breakdown structure. That's kind of like the, the beginning of all of this whole uh, Anovia lean construction process. You've got to know what you're building and the, and the, and the uh, deliverables 
schedules and so forth, real-time progress chart, if things go wrong, how do you correct them and so forth, issues, of course, issues and dashboards. So all of this is, is part of the, the Anovia product. LinkedIn, four compelling values. I'm not going to go into detail on all of these things, but a, a lot of our customers uh, and Dassault customers are seeing these business advantages for beginning to look at this new technology and this new platform. First is visibility controls costs. The more you can see about what's going on, real-time project uh, status, the better you are able to control your cost. Improve cash flow. Everybody wants to make money. They want the projects to be profitable. Uh, through earn value. This is another change that's coming. You know, earn value basically means if I can quantify parts of my building uh, sooner to say this this piece is done and it's and it's uh, approved and there's quantifiable evidence that it's done. Fabrication, prefabrication, offsite fabrication uh, is a is a real easy way to do this. If you can prove that it's done, then you can get paid from the owner uh, sooner. Then and then and, and the, the quicker you can get paid, the better your cash flow. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, another business advantage is a single version of the truth. I'm not talking about just the, the designers or the architects uh, version of the model. I'm talking about your entire supply chain or construction supply chain of all the information. That, and it's all related. Anybody makes a change, everybody's informed in it. And then, of course, you know, the whole mantra of the lean construction is to, to minimize rework and waste. And with an executable plan based on, uh, uh, you know, real-time feedback. So early on you start doing more projects. The first few projects you're collecting data but at, over time you're going to be able to analyze how you did and what you did for to be able to, to minimize future uh, waste and rework. So these are some things going on right now from a business perspective. A couple cases here I just wanted to highlight. Uh, Skans Skanska Finland, uh, large Dassault customer, contractor, they use the Dassault Anovia product. Uh, you see here, construction work packages, capital project planning and execution, collaborative digital project procurement. This is all the information management of a construction project. They, they didn't even deal with the models at this point. You know, they're talking about you know, some of the problems they had, you know, weak project transparency, project documentation was not under control. All of this leads to delays and, and rework, and you know, some of the, the rework can cost a lot of money. So now, after implementing this, they're seeing you know better visibility, collaboration between the design partners and the subcontractors, and they're and they're they're looking to save two to five percent of overall procurement spend, which for some you know multi-million dollar buildings that could be significant. And this is what some of their their detail. This is what Anovia looks like. It's a, it's a web-based product, uh, so you can you can work, you can run global projects with it, uh, no problem. This is the uh, the project schedule here ties into all the information. This is a 3D viewer of the building model, so you don't need the full-blown authoring tools. You can, you can actually use the, the viewers to, to see how the project's going. Urb, uh, Shanghai Urban Construction Group, another, uh, another case study. They, were, they, uh, they sought to improve their cash flow and uh, as well as manage the, the single version of the truth. And I'll tell you, I wanted to show you this uh, short little video of uh, let me kind of kind of tee this up. They they had uh, they're using the the Anovia products, the Katia products, and the Delmia product, which allows them to do their means and methods simulation. So what they did was let me get the the video up here. Before I start, all right. What they did was they said, all right, we're going to look at this building. Uh, this was a real building and it was built and I'll tell you and, and they said we're going to simulate this with 30% uh, prefabricate you know offsite prefabrication we're going to do 50% prefab 70% prefab and 90% prefab and then we're going to simulate how this would actually run in the field and so they wanted to see which way would be best and I'll let this it's a 5 minute thing I'm not going to let it run all the way but I'll let you show this is an identical building, so the end product, the owner doesn't know, they have no idea how much prefab was done. The end, the end building was identical, though the means and the methods to get there and the cost and the schedule was what was different. Let me show you a little bit of this. And I'm not a construction professional, you guys can probably know more about this than me, but you'll see how um, when you build 
differently and you have things coming from off-site, you've got to shore it up, you've got different uh, bracing and so forth that you have to do, you have different crane placement and so forth, different material placement, all this stuff factors into uh, how you de deliver a project. And this, this is not just a, a, a video of pretty pictures, this is actually built off the real construction data that Anovia and, and was managing, so you know that it will work. I'm going to fast forward some of this. And you'll see, uh, I think it's right around three minute. So this building's going up, and they're watching it through the simulation. And you'll notice that the um, very soon here, you can, as you can imagine, the the ninety percent prefab building is going to get done first. And you'll see it drop off here, the grid in a minute. Fast forward here a little bit. You see the 90% completed. And I'm going to tell you who the winner was here in a bit. But you, you, you kind of get the point. They actually simulated this. And with not just the construction sequencing, but the cost was able to be simulated. So what, the, what this particular owner, this building was built, and it was done with prefabrication, but they chose the 70% prefab because the 90% prefab scenario cost too much. So you, can, you, can, you can't say that, okay, I'm going to manufacture my entire building off-site. That, that doesn't make sense in, in many cases, you know, whether it's the, the cost of all the parts to manufacture or the distribution costs or, or whatever. They chose, this, uh, the owner chose and the, the construction team chose the 70% prefab. That's the kind of thing that we're talking about here in the future. All right, let's get to the next piece here. I'm going to turn this over now uh, to, to Mark. Uh, James Contronis, first let me kind of tee up. Uh, Contronis Consulting. James is a uh, CATIA expert, and, uh, and he, uh, he was going to be doing uh, the demo live today, but unfortunately he had a death in his family and was not able to, to um, be with us today. So our thoughts are with, are with James. But um, our, our BIM manager in the cloud, our VDC manager in the cloud, Mark McDonough, is going to uh, kind of stand in for James and uh, show you the, some of the detail, Katia and um, so forth. So let me uh, change the presenter to Mark. Uh, you ready, Mark? I'm ready. All right, and uh, you should have the reins. There you go. Okay, well, I hope I do James uh, justice here by filling in for him. Uh, <clears throat> James uh, Contronis Consulting is fairly unique. They offer unique um, consulting for contractors and owners uh, to streamline construction and particularly to optimize means and materials to reduce time and waste. This delivers a more efficient construction process. Uh, the premise is built on a platform with the SOAP software, the Novia and Katia. Uh, primarily, and it's utilizing what uh, Chris mentioned to before, this lean construction platform. And here we see a screenshot of a building of, uh, in Katia. This is in version 5 of Katia. And uh, <laughs> this, this, the Katia product is fairly distinctive in terms of a CAD program in that it's not like your usual uh, uh, regular CAD uh, application. It's, it's very unique in that it can handle very, very large size projects. And it does this by um, breaking out all the components. So it's a very modular component-based sort of database of parts. And with that, um, because you're not necessarily pulling in the entire model at, at any given time, you can work on these very complex models. Um, it should be noted that this is version 5 that we're seeing at this year which is still file-based, but version 6 of the day, which is out now, actually does not save to a single file or a single file. It saves to a database integrated with Synovia. Again, what's making it even more powerful that it's integrated with all the workflows and, and uh, means and methods that are all part of the Synovia platform. With this particular program, um, or the platform, I should say, and uh, Katia in particular, you can bring in all your familiar tools. So if you're using things like Revit and, and, uh, and your uh, component architects and uh, engineers are using things like Revit or, or architects love their Rhino, um, certainly a lot of manufacturers are using SolidWorks and Inventor. 
you who have steel detailers who are working in Tecla. All these things can be brought into the Castilla platform in the Novia via the IFC uh, import. And you'll see things uh, in these particular details. The thing that's distinctive about um, both of here, above and beyond, let's say, something like Revit, is that because it can handle such large amounts of detail and high complexity, you can actually start modeling things the way a contractor would use to uh, work out their details, their actual construction details and fabrication. Revit's not really designed for, for anything always a fabrication. There is a certain limit to what Revit can do. Once you reach a certain file size at about four or five hundred megabytes, it starts getting so slow that you really can't work with it much not very efficiently. Whereas Katia has this modular application that allows much larger uh, projects and much more detail. So you can start getting into showing things in your model and detailing things that are the way you're really going to construct it. This is of very much of interest for contractors. So here you start seeing things like beam pockets, maybe even the coring that goes through beams itself and base plates and whatnot that you would never typically as an architect want to bother detail. So the difference here is that the design intent of a Revit model for an architect is fine, but for a contractor it's not necessarily enough so you really need to move to a smarter, much more advanced application like the Ananovia and the Link Construction Platform to sort of handle that aspect. And again, they're re-emphasizing here that you get down to a level of detailing that would be um, something you would really try to avoid in Revit because, again, you, you slow down the model. So here, the main thing or aspect of the SO platform is that it's highly scalable so that you can go to full fabrication directly from the model. So you have this single source of truth and right down to, to pushing it to the CNC machine for fabrication and to, to the uh, shop that are assembling all the actual materials. And uh, James is working currently with the Delvia product to do a similar simulation and animation, much like you just saw um, uh, previously. And that's going to, he's working at that currently. So he's not there yet. Uh, he's coming up in a couple of weeks. So at this point, I'm just going to actually uh, minimize this and jump into actual Anovia, excuse me, Katia, and show what a model looks like. So you saw the same thing on the screen capture. Here it is. Well, Ma Mark, are you are you running this in the cloud now? This is in the cloud, so um, I'm on a remote desktop, and um, you know this is in the Advanced 2000 data center. And, and, and you know, you're, you're, Mark's in Boston, and the and the uh, the models in New York, Western New York, correct? That's correct. That's correct. And I can you know in real time uh, work on this and and uh, view it and add things and and edit my model. And if I had other people, um, other one of the uh, engineers wanted to look at this. They can uh, do this up in a central location. Uh, what's also cool on, on the remote desktop scenario, I just have to mention this, I'm now working on a, a, uh, a computer that's a little bit old. It's five or six years old. It's very good at uh, Windows XP. And I can take a model and, you know, real time move this thing around and work on it uh, because I, my virtual desktop is, is a much, much higher powered uh, uh, computer that's actually running this. So it's uh, a good way to go. I can, uh, you know, the, the, the difference also you see on some of the uh, CAD programs, you will never see this type of arrangement in other CAD programs unless you're in something like some of the manufacturing software, uh, such as SolidWorks and, and uh, uh, it's, it's those types of things. This, this one, uh, what you see here is a hierarchy of parts. And these hierarchy of parts, and you can drill down into them, you can turn things on and off, and separately work on them at will. And I just say, for example, you can just hide the uh, slabs in this case and uh, continue working on the model so they don't really need to see the slabs more and you can see the detail on So it's a really uh, powerful program that started out, to get a little bit of history, the TS started out as one of the very, very first of the 3D programs, in fact, with those systems are the people who invented 3D in CAD. And uh, you can see with its maturity here that it's, it's turned into 
a serious CAD product that is uh, type of thing that if you're really going to do high-end, extremely complicated uh, projects, this is kind of the platform that you need. And, um, you know, at this point, I've only uh, worked with the a little bit, so I'm just getting my, my feet wet on this. And uh, we'll hope to show you more. I can't necessarily show you uh, its, its capabilities as well as games could at this point, but there will be follow-up uh, uh, webinars that will go into much more detail. And with that, uh, Chris, I think I'll hand it back to you. All right. Thank you. I'll come back here, show my screen. All right, let's get on to the next thing. So just in, to, to summarize the, the whole uh, VDC platform discussion we just had and that you saw from a high-level conceptual lean construction solution experience is Anovia. That's, that's the foundational uh, aspect of, that makes all this work. Like I said, it's the conductor uh, that interfaces with all this. You've got CATIA V6, you've got uh, as well as the BIM models from other authoring tools, IFC Exchange, uh, and so forth. You can use what you currently have. You have these new capabilities coming on. And, and Dassault is working fast and furious. There's, there's like a, a, a three-year plan to, to build out all of this lean construction uh, products. But they've got a, uh, a, a lot of it available right now and people are using it and, and beginning to migrate in this direction. So here's the, the kind of the vision of the new uh, construction process, concept design, production engineering, which includes prefab, constructing, and then operating your building. All right, so let's talk about, you know, where do you start? How do I do, how would I even do this? I'm kind of, kind of just leave it at this right now. Well, we've got this concept at, at Advanced 2000. A lot of our... Um, our existing AEC clients uh, follow the path of uh, crawl, walk, and run. Let me kind of zoom in on this. And by that, it typically, and first let me talk about it just, uh, just in the case of uh, taking your existing process and your existing tools, like I mentioned, that point one, the first step, and moving it into a private cloud. We've got demo accounts. So these, we've got virtual demo, uh, virtual accounts. In fact, uh, Chad, who's on the phone here, uh, does a lot of our, our demo provisioning. Uh, Let's, it's, it's basically a free account that we let people log in for a week or two to try it out. Uh, we've got various software packages on it uh, that you need to, to kind of see. It's like, wow, I can't believe this remote computing works. I, I've tried it in my company and it never works. Um, we want you to try it out, see that, yes, in fact, it does work. Uh, we've spent a lot of R&D and intellectual property to, to work through a lot of these application issues, and we can run them remotely. And then from a demo, people say, ah, I really like this. Um, let's, let's do it, uh, a, a small pilot project or a trial, a proof of concept. And so what, we say, what, we, what we're seeing is anywhere from, I would say, 5 to 20 people on these um, pilot projects that there are actually real projects. We say, look, you, you want to do this on a small scale. You want to walk before you run. And this could take um, every project uh, pilot takes a little different flavor. They've got different goals. You know, one might want to just, I just want to see how using my existing tools um, can work with a, a, na a national team. All right, another one says, you know, I've got to do this hospital, and I don't have the hardware to do the, the design. Can I get the hardware in the cloud? So every pilot's got a different goal. And this one uh, is, you know, is not free. We, you, know, we pay, you, you pay for this. But it's a small commitment, you know, minimum of two months to a maximum, however long you want to, your project runs. And I tell people, it's, I strongly recommend you pilot the process because you're going to do two things. One, you're going to test the technologies. You're going to understand, oh, I need this kind of desktop for this application, and I need this kind of desktop for that application. And it's also, so the technology is certainly going to be new to you. And, oh, yeah, now I'm, now I'm running this on an iPad and all these different devices and terminals, and how do I, how do, I do that? The, the more important aspect of a pilot is your business process, your workflow. Think about it. You don't have to move all this data around like you used to. You don't have all of these coordination meetings that you used to. You're going to change the way you manage projects. It's important to work that out in a small scale um, on this new technology before you blast it out. So that's really how we go. We go demo, uh, pilot, and at the end of that pilot, our, our clients know exactly how the technology works. They've got their processes worked out, and they know the, how they want to roll it out. 
Some of them decide, you know, I want to roll it out by office. Some want to roll it out by project. It all depends on, on the client. And that leads to a, uh, you know, a longer term type commitment. Now, we will use that same basic concept if you're talking about Dassault. Now, it's one thing to take your existing process and tools and move them to a, a centralized data center. It's another thing if you're actually changing the way you do business and trying to adopt some of this lean construction uh, and Dassault platform. And there, you know, we've got demo capabilities. You know, James Catronis was on a demo account uh, to be able to spin up Katia and things like that. But then we go into an eval. Uh, the, the proof of concept still is the same, but you're, now you're going to need a little bit more consulting to say, all right, not only do I need IT infrastructure, but I need some consulting to help me really understand these new tools and how do I deploy them and, and you know, and what scale in my business. And then, you know, after a successful pilot, you move into a longer-term commitment. So that's the basic process, crawl, walk, run. Uh, some case studies, uh, we've got many clients and uh, we are very busy in the AEC. More and more firms are, are coming to what I call our, our AEC ecosystem. We've got firms like uh, Canon Design. Uh, they are all in our cloud, uh, about 1,400 people, 20 offices. We are their IT shop. We've got their servers, their phones their storage, their applications, all running in our data center. Uh, we've got uh, Heapy Engineering out of Dayton, Ohio, who is, uh, they're, they're, they're using our, our cloud for project-based type uh, uh, efforts. They've got, I don't know, 20-some 20, 20 people doing projects in our cloud. Uh, ANF is a small um, uh, design firm in um, Memphis, Tennessee, about 50 people, they're all in. We, we are, they got one location. They didn't have a collaboration problem. They had an IT problem. They needed to have uh, better IT capabilities for less money. Mashburn Construction, it's a little uh, getting into the contractor space. It's a small um, firm in, in South Carolina that's, that's running Navisworks in the cloud from various locations. Of course, we got the big HDR, SAIC. They're, they have not outsourced their IT to us but they are doing projects in our cloud, these large uh, construction projects. And then um, I'll just make one last note, uh, Carolina Healthcare, uh, CHS in, in North Carolina, they are our first owner that actually bought a cloud. Owners are starting to get, catch on to this idea about lean construction and how to uh, reduce waste and uh, speed the delivery of their buildings and save money. And they're starting to say, okay, I'm going to buy this cloud, and I'm going to require all of our, the, the, the contractors, the subs, to, to work in, in this environment. And there's, I don't know, I think five to seven different firms where they're all in different locations, and we built the cloud. Uh, in fact, Chad, I think Chad built it. He's on the, on the call. And then we create, you know, like six or seven, you know, VPN connections to get to their licenses and so forth. And one of the... One of the organizations was the uh, City of Charlotte permitting, electronic permitting. So they wanted to fast track this, this, uh, this project. And uh, the permitting office is in the cloud watching the building be designed as it's going through its processes. So in theory, it will get permitted faster. So like I said, this, is, this stuff is not pie in the sky. We are doing it right now. We've got clients using this. We're in production. We're in day-to-day -day operations, and it's just getting better. So that's really, you know, Advanced 2000, we've been doing, we've probably been doing the uh, AEC cloud. You know, it's, they, they started really kind of moving in droves about three years ago. Of course, Canon's been our client for about 10 years. But we're already on our third, third iteration of cloud infrastructure. We'll call it Cloud 3.0. And the cloud, while it, as exciting and important as the cloud is, that's not really going to give you a competitive advantage. It's what you do with the cloud or how you run your business, which is really what makes the whole Dassault lean construction platform so exciting to us. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll wrap. Um, this is my contact information. This, this is going to be available on our website, the video. You can reach me on LinkedIn as well. And I am going to open it up for questions now. If you haven't already done so, there is a, um, you can, you can uh, ask questions on, online. Let's see here if I can get this thing to go big. Some of you have asked some questions already. I will read them to you. Dun, 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 dun. If you haven't uh, done so yet and you want to ask some questions, feel free to do so online. But the first one uh, question I got is uh, the Dassault Lean Construction Platform with Anovia and Katia are interesting, 
but we already have some software tools that we like to use. Can these tools also run virtually in the private cloud? I think I talked about that already, but Mark, you want to elaborate? Sure. This is a very common question. We get asked this a lot. Um, I like to just tell it, uh, most people that any software that you can run on your desktop as part of your ADC toolkit or, or whatever tools you're using can be run successfully in the virtual environment. So if you're using things, particularly in the VDC environment like Navisworks, um, Vico software, which is now part of Tremble, or even Autodesk STEM 360 Glue, becoming very popular as a service, um, all these things can be configured and optimized to run in a virtual environment on, on cloud desktops. And since we know so much about these applications, because we're focused in on AEC, uh, we can deliver different desktops that help optimize and best, and best pair the application and the desktop with that experience. Okay, great. I got one quick uh, quick question here. Will this webinar be recorded and available to watch again at a later time? Uh, Brian entered that. The answer is yes. This is being recorded and it will be published on our um, our website. And I believe if you register the, the register uh, people that registered for this will get an automatic link to the recording that you can share with your colleagues. All right, another question here. Our IT guys tried running some CAD and engineering software in a virtual environment, but we felt it didn't run as well as it does on our desktops. What are you doing differently that makes it work? That sounds like a CAD engineering question. It sure does. Uh, well, Advanced 2000 implores uh, a lot of proprietary techniques and technology combined with common uh, available IT infrastructure to really develop this highly developed the cloud solution and provide the performance that you need for these AEC apps. Uh, typically when IT, uh, IT departments from some of these companies have tried it on their own, they're usually trying to repurpose or add on to existing infrastructure. And that usually doesn't go well because that infrastructure is usually set up for servers and server storage with desktop computers. So this is really a different animal and we've come a long way in perfecting it and providing an excellent cloud solution for it. Good deal. Um, how does software licensing work? I think I'll take that one. Well, and my next question is, well, what are you talking about? Which software vendor? I mean, Microsoft works different than Autodesk, works different than Dassault. And uh, what, I, what I think this means is the, the VDC software, which is what we're talking about here today. Um, First, like I said, I, I said earlier, I mentioned BYOL. For for most most of the software companies, they're freaking out over the cloud because they think that uh, you're going to buy one license and let a hundred people run on it. So they're they're really leery about what's going on here. But you know, with the proper, you know, all these guys have network licensing and so forth like that. So if 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 you're able to keep track of licenses on your infrastructure, the cloud is no different. And so one thing that is common is that the, saw, the, the construction, the, the AEC uh, software vendors, they haven't come to a point like Microsoft where they, where they let third parties buy the software, like Advanced 2000. I get asked this question all the time. Hey, can you buy uh, versions of my software and I'll just rent it for you from you when I need it? Uh, they don't allow us to do that uh, yet, uh, like Microsoft does. But you know, you're not going to save a whole lot of money on your software costs, because whatever you, you need to spend for your environment, it's, it's, it's going to be the same in the cloud. So that's every, every case is different, every software vendor is different, and we, we have the experience to work with all of them. Um, got a few more questions here. Is the, uh, is the, in the Dassault platform, means and methods a growing database? Can a contractor add his means and methods per se, or is a generic standardized database? Uh, that that's a good question. I'll 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 chip in and guys, if you got any input, I'll uh, I'll let you know. Well, think about it. Means and methods for a lot of contractors. That's your that's your uh, you know intellectual property. That's not something that you're going to share. If you figured out a a better way to lower your cost of construction, you're not going to share that with your competitors. So that's the other good thing about. Um, uh, so in the cloud, you know, security is tantamount. I mean, security is very good. You could lock these things down. Particularly, think about it. Dassault is a um, virtually every plane that has been designed in the world has, has been done in Dassault products in Anovia, and there's some very um, classified um, 
uh, information in the DSO databases that, that can be locked down so only the people that are authorized to see it. So this growing database is exactly what an individual contractor will do. Their body of knowledge uh, will grow over time and that's what they will analyze to get better and better. Uh, if they want to share it with their subs or, their, or, or anybody else, they certainly can do that, but that's not something that DSO will do. Um, yeah, I think I've got another question uh, that I just that we just answered. If you've already got specialized software, rather, do I have to change the answer? I think Mark answered that already. Is no. Um, can I can I run the uh, the cloud without running Dassault software, or vice versa? Can I run Dassault software without running in your cloud? The answer is yes to both of those. And the um, so these are these are you know like I said we've got people in the cloud right now that are not running Dassault. Dassault's got people running their software that are not in our cloud. So that's that's the way it currently is running. But we see the tremendous value of being able to combine the two, which is really why Dassault and Advanced 2000 decide to partner up. That you know between what we can do with our cloud and what their platform is going to be things that cannot be done by anybody right now. Um, can I run global? I've got uh, time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, can I run global projects this way? We're getting more and more questions. Now, now Dassault is a global company. They're headquartered in, in uh, Paris, France. They've got offices all over the, the world. Uh, Advanced 2000, we're, we're based in the, in the United States, and we, we serve mostly uh, a North America client base. However, we do have uh, North American clients that have international operations, and we're getting um, asked more and more about how do we support the uh, Pacific Rim, how can we support you know, the Middle East or Europe and so forth, and, and, and it's a real challenge with a lot of the, the, um, the software products out now. I can't really run, uh, say, an AutoCAD or a Revit or any, any type of remote, even, even CATIA for that matter and a remote desktop. So the way Mark was running the CATIA product from Boston to New York, we can't run that from Australia to New York. The latency is, is too high. We like to see less than 100 millisecond latency. However, with the Dassault platform, they are running global projects uh, right now. And the way they do that, because of this, this uh, database um, messaging uh, type platform, you could have a CATIA workstation or a Nanovi implementation in Australia or Singapore Pacific Rim and it will talk um, on the back end to the a similar implementation in North America. So you can think of it as um, maybe as a uh, three clouds, maybe across <coughs> across the world, or you can have one cloud where the majority of your data is in, in North America, but your your international partners will still have local uh, connectivity or rich clients to be able to connect into the remote data. So that's a new option that we have now that we did not have before. And I think that's pretty much all I have from questions, uh, and we're about out of time. So again, I want to thank you for attending today. I hope this was informative. We will reach out to you. We'll send you the link to the, um, uh, the recorded webinar, and we look forward to working with all of you. Thank you very much.